Welcome back Commodore fans. Today I'm going to be using the Vision Basic compiler to create a basic program with inline assembly code. This combines the simplicity of basic with the speed of machine language. So let's get started. I'm going to be using my coin flip program that I've shown in previous videos. It's a small, simple program that benefits greatly by having a machine language routine. I'm going to take a few minutes to walk through the standard basic code. Then we'll move it into Vision Basic where we'll optimize it and add inline assembly code to it. If you'd like to skip ahead, there are chapter markers for each section in the description. OK, let's begin. We set up the variables in line 10. H will be a count of heads, C will be a running count of coin flips, and N is the number of coin flips between screen updates. And finally, we see the random function from the TI variable. In lines 20, 30, and 40, we clear the screen and print the row headers. Next, we set the clock to zero and start two four next loops. We will do 10 iterations of N number of coin flips, N being equal to 1,000. So 10 times 1,000 equals 10,000 total coin flips. In line 80, if a random number is greater than 0.5, we increment H, or heads, by 1. If less than 0.5, we continue the loop. We are only counting the number for heads right now. The count of tails will be calculated later. When the inner loop ends, we increment the counter by n, and then go on to calculate and print the results thus far, using the cursor keys to move to the correct position before printing, and then continue the main loop. When the main loop has finished, we read the clock, calculate and print the time, and we're finished. To get a benchmark, let's run this program to see how long it takes. I'll fast forward the video to save you some time. Seventy nine point five three seconds. Let's record that time on the scoreboard. Now let's load this program in Division Basic. The program won't run as is. We will have to make a few changes to it. I'll clear the screen and list the program again to give us a clean working space. First, I'll insert a new line at the beginning of the program and start with the CLR command. This will clear all variable memory and is recommended to be issued at the beginning of any Vision Basic program. Next, a CLS command, which will clear the text screen. Then, a random command. This will initialize the SID3 oscillator, which Vision Basic uses for random number generation. I'll put a link down below to an article that explains how the SID chip can be utilized to produce random numbers. The last thing I want to do is define a decimal number to be used for the number of seconds, which I will call S. The variable assignments in line 10 will remain the same. However, there is no longer a need to seed the random number generator, so I'll delete that. In lines 20, 30, and 40, I'll replace the print statements that use cursor key movements to a LOC or locate function. And as you can see, this is a simple XY screen position followed by the text you want to print. OK, now that's done. We move on to line 60, which will also need to be changed. Vision Basic does not recognize the system variable TI or TI string. Instead, it uses the clock function, which operates just like the system variable TI and also counts in jiffies. We can set the clock by adding a numerical value after the command. In this case, we want it to be zero. The two four next loops in line 70 can remain the same. The RND, or random function, in line 80 will have to be changed. Vision Basic still uses the RND function, and when used by itself with an integer variable, as I'm doing here, it produces a random number in the range of 0 through 65535. I'll take that 65535, divide it by 2, which gives me a midpoint of 32767.5. I'll drop the decimal and use 32767 for the if-then statement. 
Instead of using h equals h plus 1 to increment the heads count, we'll use Vision Basic's speedy math command inc, that's I-N-C, which increases a variable by 1. Speedy math commands convert simple arithmetic functions into machine language when compiled and run. In the next line, I'll use the speedy math command add to increase the counter variable c. In lines 100 and 110, I'll replace the print statements with locate functions. Line 120 will also need a change. Vision Basic can't use expressions for function and commands, so the tails count will have to be calculated before printing. I'll use the speedy math command sub to calculate the current value for tails using the variable t, and also replace the print statement with another locate function. In line 130, I'll change ti to clock, and then divide by 60 to convert the jiffies into seconds, and assign it to the previously defined decimal variable s. And finally, in line 150, I'll replace the last print statement with the locate function, and then replace s divided by 60 with just s. And I'll also add a print statement before the end here to put a blank line after the output. Okay, we should be good to go. Let's run it and see what happens. All right, it compiled okay and appears to be working normally. I'll let it run to completion in real time. And finished. 10.86 seconds. That's a little over seven times faster than the standard basic version. Okay, now that it's all working, let's save this program as coin. And when we look at the directory, you'll see that Vision Basic appends a .vis extension to the program automatically. This makes it easy to identify Vision Basic programs on your disks. The next step is to insert some inline assembly language to really supercharge this program. This is the routine that I created for the standard Basic version, and I'll adapt it for inline use in Vision Basic. I'm not going to do a line-by-line -line analysis. It's pretty self-explanatory and very well commented. I will point out a few details, though. First, it's being loaded into the tape cassette buffer starting at address 828 decimal. This starting address won't be necessary for the inline assembly code. The H count is being stored as a 16-bit integer in the zero-page addresses of 251 and 252 decimal. This number will have to be retrieved when the routine returns back to basic. Random numbers are being generated by the SID chip, specifically the Voice 3 oscillator. I'll leave a link in the comments to an article that explains this technique. And finally, the two NOP instructions are there to add a few cycles, so that the SID 3 oscillator can cycle on to the next number before looping. There is an excellent video on the 8-bit show and tell channel that explains the oscillator cycle rate, which I will also leave a link to in the comments. And that's it! A mere 30 bytes of machine language code that is going to supercharge my basic program. Now that I've got the assembly code ready, let's start using it in the program. I'll begin with the small change in line 80. I'm going to replace the RAND and IF-THEN statements with two assembly language instructions. So I'll delete the RAND and IF-THEN statements and start with an open bracket to indicate that the following will be assembly instructions. The first instruction will be to load the accumulator with the value at hex address D41B, which contains a random value from voice 3 of the SID chip and is in the range of 0 through 255. The second instruction will be to branch on minus to program line 90, minus meaning that the value in the accumulator is less than 128 then a closing bracket to indicate the end of the assembly code, and a colon to separate it from BASIC's increment statement. So what's going to happen here is that we get a random number, and if that number is less than 128, we jump to program line 90. If it's greater than or equal to 128, we increment H. And that's all we're going to do for the moment. Let's test it out and run it. 1.9 seconds. 
That's 41 times faster than the standard basic version. Next, let's do the full 1000 iteration loop entirely in machine language. Starting with line 70, I'll remove the second for an X loop. The assembly code in line 80 will be deleted and I'll leave it as a blank line for whitespace purposes. And the next statement in line 80 is no longer needed, so I'll get rid of that. The assembly code will be inserted between lines 80 and 90. So I'll clear the screen and list the program through line 80 to begin the inline assembly code at line 81. Lines with assembly code start with an open bracket, followed by the instructions. You can use both hex or decimal notation for numbers or addresses. Optionally, you can also end the line with a closing bracket, but it's not necessary, so I'll leave it off. In the next line, we load the Y register with 250, so 4 times 250 equals 1000, which is the number of iterations we want to perform. Now some sharp-eyed programmers out there may have noticed that I'm not using the zero page address as seen in the full assembly listing to store the total for heads. That's because it won't be necessary in Vision Basic, and I'll explain why in just a minute. The next line of code gets the random number and tests to see if it's less than 128. If true, it branches over the next line. Quick note here is I don't think I mentioned this before. You can put multiple instructions on the same line, separated by colons, just as you can in BASIC. Line 84 is where the H variable is incremented. This is accomplished by incrementing the low byte and high byte of the H variable directly. We can do this because Vision BASIC assigns an address to declared variables, and sees H as an address in memory when compiled and run. So here, H would be the low byte, and H plus 1 would be the high byte. Being able to access the bytes of H directly in assembly code is incredibly convenient and efficient. Then we continue on with the rest of the code and end with a blank white space. And that's it! We don't need an RTS instruction because we're not returning from anything. The program will continue execution with the next line of BASIC. I'll list the program again so we can see the program flow. We start by zeroing the clock, start a for next loop, and then enter the machine language routine for 1000 iterations. When the routine ends, we re-enter BASIC to update the screen and continue on until complete. I'll save this program before running it. If I've made a mistake somewhere and it crashes, I don't want to lose my code. I'll name it Coin2. Okay, let's run it. 0.3 seconds. Awesome. Let's do that one more time just to make sure. Man, that is impressive. Checking the scoreboard. That's 265 times faster than the standard basic version. All right, there's one last thing I want to demonstrate. So far I've been running this program inside the Vision Basic environment. So let's compile this program into a standalone executable that can run on a standard Commodore 64. We do that with the command comp, short for compile, I guess, then give it a file name to compile it to disk. Now that that's finished, let's check the disk directory. The file coin.vex is the standalone executable program that doesn't need Vision Basic to run. So I'll reset into standard 64 mode and load coin.vex. Listing it just shows the product name, nothing to see there. So let's run it. 0.3 seconds. We get the same results. Well, that's all I have for you today. Thanks for watching, and as always, be careful out there.